Okay guys, so now let's look at the installation of an Enerdrive transfer inverter. We ran through before uh, of some of the key features of it. Let's touch base on that again if you've only just joined. So key benefits here uh, or locations of the equipment. DC connections here, positive and negative. You've got your IC, IEC connections for input and output on this side. We've got our safety switch uh, and 16 amp breaker on the side here. We've also got our AC outlet on the side here as well. So first off, when it comes to installation, these units do generate heat. Uh, and as you'll see later on when we're talking about fault finding, they do have error codes if they do overheat, for example, or they can shut down. So the first key thing to think about when you're installing the unit is installing them in a cool, dry location that is well ventilated. Now, the way the unit actually cools itself is it's got air intakes on the back side here and fans for discharge here. So it is key that you don't mount the unit on anything that's got a bit of um, soft play, for example. So don't mount it onto any foam installation where when you screw the inverter down, that foam may actually block off the air intake. And similarly, you don't want to mount it too close to a bulkhead or cabinet work on this end here, the fact that the fans will actually start blocking off and reduce airflow. So you really want to have that good airflow through this system here, but also around the unit as well. The next key thing to remember when you're choosing a location in your installation of being at a, a caravan, a canopy, a marine application, is keep it as close to the battery as possible. That is because obviously, like we just spoke about, you're drawing a lot of power from the battery. For example, this 2001 inverter, you could be drawing around about 180 amps DC. That is quite a large current load, which therefore means you need large cabling. If you run it any further than our sort of recommended is about one and a half meters away from the battery. If you run it any further, one, you'll have to upgrade your cable. And secondly, you'll get to the stage where no matter what cable size you start upgrading it to, you will have voltage drop there as well, which is not what you want for an inverter because they are sensitive to voltage and you will limit the performance if you are getting voltage drop. So key things there, install close to your battery, choose the correct size of cabling, the correct cable diameter. Don't have any excessive cabling if you can, cut the cabling shorter and re-terminate it for example and definitely ensure that you're running the right size cabling. A lot of the tech questions we get that my inverter's not operating correctly is they might be doing something like just running 25 mil squared cable to this 2001 inverter. Few things there, one, you risk overheating the cable. Secondly, you're gonna get very poor performance out of the inverter itself. You won't get that maximum 2000 watt running out of it there. So some of the other sides here. Now let's talk about circuit protection there as well. It's all outlined in the manual, the circuit protection that's required. Uh, we recommend good quality and this optional cable kit that we supply with the one and a half meter pre-terminated cables comes with the Busman high quality fuses there as well, the mega fuses. Just ensure you do use a good quality fuse and fuse holder or circuit breaker as well. Again, with the large currents that these inverters will draw, any lower quality, poor quality equipment will risk either overheating the connection studs or actually overheating the circuit breaker of fuse as well, which is the last thing you want in your application. So good quality connections there again. So it is straightforward, positive and negative. Either through a fuse or through a circuit breaker, consider if you're going to be somebody that is putting your van or your canopy or your boat into storage for periods of time, we definitely recommend having a isolator on the supply to your inverter. That is because even with the inverter turned off from the control panel, they will still draw a small amount of residual power. And if your caravan's in storage without AC mains, so without power to your AC charger or solar power going into your batteries, they will deplete your batteries over time. So again, recommended having a battery isolator. Again, look at the model inverter you're using and ensure that that battery isolator has got a continual rating that is greater or equal than what the rating is off the inverter or refer to your fuse rating as well there. So key sides there. We've also got the DC grounding lug here as well. Depending on the application of what it's going into is the requirement for this DC grounding lug. So know the application, refer to the applicable standards as a guideline for RV caravan installations, uh, four millimeter squared cable minimum to your chassis of your caravan, for example. If it's in a marine application, the Australian standards for that 
calls for the main connection onto this side here to be no more than one size less than your main positive connections. So for example, we're running 70 mil on this one here. Minimum you'd be able to run there is 50 millimeter squared down to your DC negative bus on your marine application. So just know your standards you're working towards and go from there. Key things, um, inverters are AC. So let's touch on that next. If it's a transfer model inverter like you've got here, there will be a level of wiring required to be done by an electrician. Again, things change a little bit in the different states and territories. So know what the legal requirements are in your state and territory. So we do supply them with this IEC lead here. It is all as one, it just looks like an extension lead there. But the way it's actually designed is that one there with the female plugs on it is your AC input. So that would be wired to the AC mains input of your van, your canopy system, your boat, for example, which then plugs into the inverter there. On the output side, which is key, the one with the male pins on, and just think about this. The one here with the AC voltage coming out of this from the inlet of your van, you don't wanna be able to touch. So that's why those ones are that way around. Again, if you're questioning as to which way around it is, best you definitely get an AC electrician in to do it. This one here, however, is your AC out, which then runs to your appliances, your microwaves, your AC outlets, your air conditioners, for example, there, if you choose. So that's that way. But again, consult an AC electrician to get that installed and certified. That's the AC side there. If you are using a transfer model, but you haven't got around to getting an AC licensed electrician, you can still do your DC wiring on this side. And the great benefit is on the side here, you've got a 10 amp rated outlet anyway, that you can run some equipment. So if you're building a new caravan, you can actually start running equipment off this whilst you uh, arrange to get an AC licensed electrician in to do that side of the installation. Another key benefit here as well on the transfer model inverters, and I'll just take a little look on the side here, for example, is we've got our control panel here. This can actually be mounted in a couple of different ways. One, just as it is. Secondly, if you're actually installing the inverter in a vertical application like that, you can actually just take the unit off, spin it around so it's the right orientation. Lastly, we do actually supply it with this extension cable. Now with this extension cable here, the unit just simply unscrews with the two screw connectors here, and you can run the remote cable through, through your van, through your boat, through your canopy, for example, and mount the screen where you need to be. So we'll have a look at that on a caravan a little bit later on, how easy it is, especially when these are installed under lounges, for example, or sort of tighter to get to places, that you can have that screen remote mounted. A key thing when you are installing the remote mount screen, and we get a lot of questions about this, the ferrite coil end should be located down at the inverter end. So exactly like I have here, this end will simply plug into here and this end here will go to the control panel. We do see a lot of faults if people shorten these cables themselves, either with the quality of the crimps they're putting on, will cause the inverter to operate a little bit erratically, or you may get error codes and all that. So again, if you are shortening it, ensure you're doing it correctly and of high quality. Secondly, if you're making your own cable, do exactly the same thing. Must have that ferrite coil on there, must be the same cables, the same pins. We do also see that if the cables are damaged during the installation, as can happen when a caravan's in production, for example, it may get a little cut through. If you're sort of seeing some irregular activity of how the inverter is being controlled, simply just unplug it from its remote location, use the short cable it comes supplied with and plug it directly into here. Quick little fault finding tip there. Lastly, another key thing as well when it comes to installation, because we do see this happen too, you've installed the unit, you've put battery power onto it, you've run the cable through, and you're at that final fit out stage off the build, but you've all of a sudden, you've got five meters too much cable where you want to do it there. And you go, okay, let's just quickly cut that and re-terminate it. Do not cut this cable when there is DC power onto the inverter. Either completely isolate the inverter from DC power, or better still, unplug this remote cable from the inverter. There is risk of damage to the unit that if you do cut this cable uh, when it is plugged in and when there's DC power on the inverter. So again, if you are shortening this cable, make sure you do actually disconnect it from here as well as ideally also isolate the DC power to it. 
So that's the key things there with the installation side of the transfer model inverter. A few key things to touch base on again. Install this close to your battery to minimize the cable length. You must keep it to one and a half meters length, which is ideal. Follow the recommendations in the manual or online. For a 2000 watt inverter, we say 70 mil squared cable for 12 volt applications. For the 2600 watt inverter, we say 95 millimeter squared cable for that one and a half meter long run. So that's the key things there. An isolator, if you are planning on putting your caravan into storage to reduce that standby current there. Run the cable, great application there of being able to use this, but do consider taking it safe when you are shortening or making your own cables there. Again, lastly, on the AC side of things, don't risk it. Engage a qualified electrician to sign off and carry off the work to make sure it does meet standards. Thanks guys.